Welcome to Percussion Methods. Today we're talking all about concert snare drum, anatomy, how to set up the instrument, how to select a drum, and how to select sticks. Looking at the different parts of a concert snare drum, this head is called the batter head, so when we play on. The largest part of the drum is the shell that makes up the body of the instrument. It's usually made out of laminated wood or sometimes metal. On the bottom, we have a snare side, also known as a resonant head. This is usually clear and thinner than the batter head. Applying tension to both the batter head and the resonant head are rims or counter hoops. Tension rods are these individual adjustment points and they go into tension rod casings. On the bottom of the drum, you can see the snares which give it its distinct sound. This particular drum has three different types of snares that are activated at different dynamic levels. On this end, we have the snare strainer mechanism or the snare throw off. This is what pulls the snares against the bottom head. We also have some individual adjustment knobs to control the snare's tension. The snares run across to the opposite side of the drum where they're held by this butt plate. On the shell is a badge that tells you the manufacturer, the model, and often a serial number for the drum. Also on the shell, you'll see a little hole called a vent. This allows air to escape as you're playing the instrument. When you're placing your drum on the stand, try to make sure that the stand isn't touching the snare wires. That would inhibit them from vibrating or turning them on and off. That might mean placing the drum slightly off-center rotationally, but that's just fine. Set the instrument up at about belt height with it tilted slightly away from you. And you want the snare strainer, or the throw-off, to be toward the performer. That makes it easy to access to turn them on and off during a performance. Having the snare strainer facing toward the performer also means that as they play in different dynamic levels, they'll always be on top of the snares, giving you maximum response from them. Having the drum tilted away from the performer encourages a really natural wrist angle and gives you a lot of mobility to work with in German grip. To get the drum at a proper height, you'll need a stand that is taller than a drum set snare drum stand. Try to get one that can accommodate a range of different player heights. When you're playing snare drum, stand up tall with your feet about shoulder width apart and give the drum a little bit of space. If you crowd the drum, it's a little harder to play in the center because you need to pull your shoulders back. If you're way far away from the drum, it's harder to play soft dynamics and you have to reach really, really far forward. About a grapefruit's worth of space is about right. This particular drum is a standard 14 inches in diameter, but is slightly deeper than average. It's a six and a half inch deep drum. This gives it a really nice dark and bold sound, which works great for loud passages. We can contrast that to the smaller drum. It's only 13 inches in diameter and only four inches deep. This drum works great for soft, intricate passages. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison so you can check out the difference in sound. That's quite a difference, so if you have access to multiple drums, try and select the one that's gonna work best for your performance situation. Or you can even set up multiple drums for a concert. The tension of the snare wires has a big effect on the tone of the drum. If they're too tight, the drum will sound really, really stuffy and won't be sensitive. If they're too loose, the snares will rattle around and create a bunch of excess noise. You want them to be flush against the snare side head and easily strummable. When you put the drum on the stand, they shouldn't be drooping below the head. They should also be easy to move with your finger. Here's what the drum sounds like when the snares are too loose. you'll notice that they're rattling and not providing a whole lot of good response. Here's what the drum sounds like when the snares are too tight. It sounds okay at a loud dynamic level, but when doing soft playing, it sounds very stuffy. Unless a part specifies to play with the snares off, by default we play with the snares on. However, during a performance, if you have a few bars of rest, it's good to turn those snares off. That way they don't sympathetically vibrate and cause some unwanted noise in the middle of a performance. When you turn the snares back on, do so gently so that you don't hear the wires touching the bottom of the head. Most of the time, we don't need to add any kind of muting or dampening to the drum. It might seem ringy up close, but by the time that sound reaches the audience, it's just contributing to the fullness of the tone of the instrument. However, if you have lots of soft, intricate playing or fast passages that need greater definition, you can add a little bit of dampening. 
I don't recommend putting anything like a wallet or a cell phone or a big towel or anything that might move around or provide excess dampening to the drum. I really like using Moon Gel. They're adhesive, they don't move around on the instrument, and you can apply one or multiple ones to really dial in the amount of muffling that you want. You can use these for all kinds of instruments, concert snare drum, drum set, timpani, you can even put them on things like cymbals to dry up the sound. They're really inexpensive and you can use them for all kinds of things. I've added one piece of moon gel on the side of the drum here, closer to the player, simply because I'm miking the instrument up close and I wanna give a little bit more definition in the video. Concert snare sticks are generally larger than drum set sticks, but smaller than marching sticks. They have enough mass that they can play intricate things like buzz rolls and ornaments while not being so heavy that they damage the head. I like concert snare sticks that have a medium to long taper and a fairly long tip that provides more surface area for playing nice buttery buzz rolls. This particular stick is a Vic Firth American Classic 2B. It's hickory, it's nice and heavy. It feels like the stick has a lot of good moisture in it. This is technically a drum set stick. It's just a very, very large drum set stick and it actually works quite well for a concert snare drum. It's also quite economical. If you've got lots of soft, intricate playing, you can go for a stick kind of like this. It has a really long taper as the stick gets skinnier and a small round tip. For bolder playing, such as during a march, you can get a larger stick such as this one. It has a bigger diameter, still has a long taper, and a nice big bead. To get a consistent sound when playing on snare drum, you want your sticks to be as pitch matched as possible. You can see how close they are by holding them very delicately in your fingers and then tapping with this knuckle part of your index finger. These are really, really well pitch matched, but if you were to have one stick that's slightly higher than the other, put that in your dominant hand. If it's higher in pitch, it has less mass, which means that you've put the more massive stick in your non-dominant hand, which helps with even playing. So for example, if you're a right-handed person, take the stick that was higher in pitch because it has less mass and put an R on the butt end of it. That way you use that stick in your stronger hand and you use the more massive stick in your less strong hand. And whenever you buy a new pair of sticks or mallets, I highly recommend writing your name or initials somewhere under the stamp in a place where you don't touch the stick. That way, if there's multiple pairs of the same model of implement laying around, you know which ones are yours. You should not use your nice concert snare drum sticks for anything but concert snare drums. So no drum set, no marching percussion. They should never even touch anything metallic. So no rim shots either, even if you're playing rim shots on a concert snare drum. The reason is those techniques tend to put wear on the stick and it chops it up and it knocks them out of pitch matching, which will give you an inconsistent sound.